Josephine Ventura. Good evening. My name is Josephine Ventura from Riverside Edge Cone Neighborhood Association in Washington Heights. And there are a couple of reasons why I came to testify and um, to um, ask for a zero, zero increase. One of them is that the landlord has huge increases to MCIs approved by the HCR. Another way they can increase the, the uh, values of the apartment, the, the, the rent of the apartment, is through individual apartment increases. Having vacancy bonus increases every time a tenant moves out of an apartment. The regulating rent stabilizes apartment, raising the rents to market rates. Another increase is a burden in New York City's household, creating grounds for evictions. We can pay our rent. Landlord take us to court when that happens. Once they get holdovers against tenants, it implies homelessness in our neighborhoods. Landlords also get benefits when they replace appliances and charge fees that stay permanently in our monthly rents. We don't need more increases to end up on the streets with our families. Landlords are making huge profits. Let's demand them to open up their books. The most affected in our, are our senior citizens with fixed incomes and low-income families even getting hours reduced in their jobs, which translate to a salary reduction. They are the ones getting the worst of all this because they have to stretch, stretch their income and decide whether to put food on their tables, co-pay medical fees and uh, medications. Please approve zero increases this time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Evelyn Rivera. Is Evelyn Rivera here? No? All right. The next three speakers are Adelki Kapanen, Dave Subrin, and Hector Jose Gomez. Hi there, everyone. My name is Adalki. How are you guys doing today? Fine, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So my name is Adalki Capellan, and I lived at 119 Elwood Street for a year, almost a year and a half. My management company was Terrastone L. I say Elwood Holdings LP. There was three roommates, and all of us were paying $900 each. This is an Inwood, so. So before moving in that specific unit, the tenants before us signed a preferential lease. Um, this past May, I moved. My rent had increased to $80. That might not be too bad, but when you see that as a share of the increased rent, that's 80 times three. Um, I've only lived there for a year and a half, and I couldn't afford to live in the neighborhood that I grew up in. Even if I had roommates, I had to move back with my mother. Luckily, I have the privilege of being with my mother, but not many other folks around the city have that privilege, sorry. After moving in with my mother, I noticed that the next building over from my mother has now been approved for two MCIs. Every day I see more permits on their door and I fear that my building within the next year is gonna be in the same predicament. Uh, tenants are being harassed and brought out of their rent-stabilized units through this preferential lease. That's just one of the tactics that's being used by the landlords. Each of you are held responsible for all the rent stabilized tenants in all boroughs. These increases are too much. 2% is a lot for New York City tenants. This is why I'm asking you to vote for a 0% increase. None of us can afford to be living in those predicaments anymore. There's a lot of conditions that we have withheld and we, we keep it and sometimes we don't even say it because we're afraid of that risking our tenancy. So I think it's really important. I'm here for folks that aren't here and that wouldn't be able to make it because they're actually working to keep the rent stable. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Subrin. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Dave Subrin, a uh, member of CASA, and I'm retired now from, um, I was trained by HPD in uh, building maintenance, seven-day administration, weatherization, and electrical troubleshooting. So my testimony is just to expose the hidden profits that real estate people make. Every year we get a rent increase, yet real wages are not growing in kind, which the rent guideline board's own report corroborates. So if we were to get another rent increase without a similar wage increase, tenants would be even more rent burdened, which would lead to more evictions, homelessness, which is already at a record high of 60,000 and counting, not to mention those in the streets and doubled up with families and friends for the last nine consecutive years. By the way, I used to be one. Keep in mind, we are not only trying to halt rent increases now, but to correct the huge increases suffered during the Bloomberg and Giuliani administration, where the mayors appointed landlord-friendly RGB members who passed huge unjustified rent increases, sometimes double, triple the inflation rate. Also, the landlords of rent-stabilized apartments have a safety net called a profit hardship exemption which means that as a landlord, if your building brings in less than 5% profit in a year, you can apply for this special exemption to have your rent increase beyond what would be legal. Ironically, few landlords take advantage of this. Example, last year only three landlords applied and were disqualified, which was why few landlords take advantage of this exemption, because it would mean they would have to open their books and show and prove to the city that they are actually struggling, to do, struggling due to low profits, and this is why for the past several years, there has never been a successful attempt to qualify. So landlords resort to other more profitable methods with less scrutiny, such as MCIs, where in 2017, landlords were granted $185 million, IAIs, preferential leases, vacancy bonuses, as well as nuisance fees on their rent bill, like air conditioner, washing machine, and refrigerator surcharges to be paid in perpetuity. And this is, a, this is excluding the many tax and legal benefits and or loopholes on their real property, like depreciation, tax exemption, credits in, in return for, for providing so-called affordable housing, like 421A, with its multiple embedded discounts, like uh, uh, low-income tax credit, known as LICTE. Excuse and me, could you wind up your testimony, I am, please? I am. Thank and you. And J51 programs. Today, landlords make about 40 cents on the dollar. Meanwhile, one out of four rent-stabilized tenants live below the poverty line. The poverty rate is in New York City is over 15%, and the past two years, personal bankruptcy filing has risen over 10%. Landlords not only make money every year, but importantly, their profits increase. Last paragraph. Rental income for landlords has increased by 3.1%, while operating costs increased only 2.4% for the net in operating income, which is how much money or property a landlord takes in after expenses not only grew, but was compounded 4.4% per year for the last 12 consecutive years. So in closing, I implore you to consider the aforementioned factual statistics based on empirical evidence and the anecdotal testimonies that you have heard here this evening from we, the tenants, and vote yes for a rent increase. Thank you. Thank you. Hector Jose Gomez. Hector Jose Gomez, are you here? He left? Okay, thank you. The next three speakers are Naomi Corporam, Rafael Schweitzer, and Sergio Cuevas. I just named three. All right. I mean, when you, when you get down to the third one, you know. Okay. Is Naomi Corporam here? No. Raphael Schweitzer? Sergio Cuevas? All right. My name is 
is Sergio Cuevas. I am a member of the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition. I reside at 2785 Sedwick Avenue. A rent stabilized apartment, so called rent stabilized apartment. My landlord is Finkelstein Timberger, a person, a real estate company that mode of operation is obtaining a building and initially and right away uh, imposing MCIs. That's his mode of operation. He owns over 86 buildings, okay? And all we're doing is just feeding the pig. You know, I, I do this as a volunteer, okay? I work, I work hard, and I volunteer with the Northwest Bronx Community and Courage Coalition Housing Community Committee. And you, we, have, we don't have everybody here. We don't have the people who are working hard, who are afraid to come out because of their status, okay? We have elderly people that are getting abused, but we don't care. We don't care. You folks don't care. You raise the rates, okay? We get MCIs left and right, and it's, you know, so evil that they become a permanent fixture of the rent. That's what makes it so hard. That's what makes it so nasty. And all we're saying is, hey, no rent increases. They're getting their rent, okay? And they're getting their MCIs when they, get, when they put them through. Sometimes we get lousy service, believe me. So all I'm saying is think about this, okay, for the future. You're going to be in a situation such as we are right now. And then we're going to see you cry the blues, okay? Remember that. Thank you very much for letting me talk. Can you dig it? No rent Thank increases. Thank you. Okay, we have about 20 more speakers. I need to take about a three-minute break, and we'll be back. Okay. The next speakers are Angelo Vega, Lena Melendez, and Nelson Lozado. Angelo Vega, is it Angelo? Lena Melendez? That's me. Okay, great. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Lena Melendez. And I'm a resident of 565 West 162nd Street in Washington Heights. Oh my God, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need a rent rollback, but we'll settle for a rent freeze. Under no conditions do we need a rent increase. The RGB increase is not the only way the rent goes up. MCIs, preferential rent leases, late fees, individual apartment increases, and the 20% vacancy bonus. So the RGB is not the only way landlords get an increase. If every time a tenant moves out, if every time a tenant moves out, they request an IAI and they don't, they don't have to give receipts to the HCR. Okay, so there's no way of knowing if they really did those improvements in the apartments. And yet they sometimes get to deregulate the apartments if they goes past $2,700. They get subsidies for Section 8 housing tenants. We need a rollback, not a rent increase. The price of food goes up, the price of transportation goes up, the price of everything goes up, but wages don't go up, and we need a rent rollback. Landlords are allowing their buildings to go into disrepair. The real estate market in New York is bubbling over. Re rezonings are devastating low-income neighborhoods. And what we have is economic apartheid. What we have is an ethnic cleansing. That's what we have. Okay, it's a racial segregatory agenda that the mayor de Blasio has in this city. He's in the pockets of Rebney, okay? He's, a, he's nothing but a Rebney puppet. 
And if you, any of you are with him, then you are doing Rebney's bidding. Make no mistake. Downing, those rezonings are downing rent-stabilized buildings, incentivizing landlords to harass tenants to get out so they can destabilize the apartments and get market rate rents. Low-income tenants are getting priced out because low income is anywhere below $65,000. I ain't never made $65,000 in my life, and I'm 54 years old. Rebney, that's what's at the root cause of our rent problems, and with their money, they influence our politicians, our lawmakers, our policies, and you too. What did you, what did you think, what do you think about de Blasio's being caught in a re restaurant basement, right, and get with $100,000, right, from, from, the, uh, from, from real estate moguls? He's selling us out. He's selling New York City out. He ran his campaign on bridging the divide between the tale of two cities. He's lining his pockets is what he's doing. Don't be a de Blasio puppet. He's supposed to work for us. And you are supposed to work for us. So do your job. Thank you. Nelson Lozado. Nelson Lozado. No. All right, the next three speakers are Martha Melendez, Alexis Francisco, and Allison Manuel. She left? Okay, thank you for letting me know. Alexis Francisco? left. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Alexis Francisco. I am a member of Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition and New Day Church. And I'm a tenant at 3150 Rochambeau Avenue in the Bronx. Uh, my building is just a couple of blocks up from the stretch of Webster Avenue that was rezoned a couple years ago. And that rezoning was pitched as something that was going to stimulate the economy of the Bronx and bring jobs to my community and affordable housing. Now I go out and I'll stand on the corner of 204th Street and Webster and I can count six new residential buildings under construction in a two block stretch, at least 12 stories high each. Neighborhood businesses have been getting their rents raised and closing their doors. And now the landlords are starting to jack up rents and harass tenants because they see an opportunity to line their pockets on our backs. In my building, we just got hit with a huge MCI supposedly for elevator repairs. And what happens this week? Me and my roommate got stuck in the elevator two nights ago. We got stuck in it again yesterday afternoon. And then a friend of mine and her partner were coming to the house and they got stuck in it last night. Tell me how that justifies our rent going up by almost $800 a year permanently. On top of that, my roommate and I have to worry about speaking out against the shady landlord because we have preferential rent. And if he retaliates, he could take that away and our rent goes up by $1,000 in one shot. People in my building are afraid to speak up because they know landlords can retaliate taking away these preferential rents or dragging people to court on false charges. The system is already set up to benefit the landlords at every turn. And this board, every one of you sitting up there at that table, you are the place where the interests of working people where the, where the needs of the tenants are supposed to get taken into consideration. Don't sell yourselves for the interests of wealthy landlords. You have an opportunity to act on what is right. Now a huge stretch of Jerome Avenue is getting rezoned from Yankee Stadium to Burnside Avenue, supposedly to bring affordable housing that nobody in our communities can actually afford. We all know what this is going to bring and who it's going to benefit. The Bronx is the last borough where you can find rent that's anywhere near affordable, and now we're in the, cross, the crosshairs for gentrification too. So all these people that you saw here tonight, we're not here because we wanna be. We would much rather be at home relaxing with our families or curled up with Bay. But we're here because you, you need to see the faces of the people whose lives you hold in your hands. Do the right thing. Vote a rent freeze. We demand a rent freeze. Thank you. Allison Manuel.
My name is Allison Manuel, and I'm also a member of the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition uh, and of New Day Church. And I've been a Bronx resident for almost a decade. And in the building where I live in 3150 Rochambeau Avenue, the landlord is pushing for an MCI that the landlord is justifying with duplicated checks, work that has been done after the MCI was applied for, and repairs they have never completed. This past week alone, my roommate and I got stuck in the elevator twice, and I am an able-bodied person who holds privileges that the majority of the people in my building don't. Many are elders, young people, folks with disabilities, most of them low-income people of color with entire families to feed. And I know that you as a board could not justify voting for a rent increase that would reward owners of the, like this one if the majority of you lived with the kinds of landlord abuse that everyone here has been testifying tonight. Already, we are experiencing re retaliation for exercising our right to organize as the landlord has begun taking tenant leaders to court for fraudulent claims to harass them to stop. I know that you as a board could not justify voting for a rent increase that will re reward these owners if the majority of you had to live with the consequences of your decision. So if you vote for a rent increase this year, you are not only voting to make life for the people in this borough unlivable, you are signaling to all landlords that they can continue with this kind of harassment with no consequences. The choice y'all have in front of you is not really one about what is a justifiable, in, justifiable increase for owners to do business. The choice y'all have in front of you is a moral choice about right and wrong about the future of our borough, the future of our city, and when history is written, whose side are you gonna be on? Because the choice for all of us is clear. No matter where we go, we will continue to fight back against the apathy of boards that are stacked with people who have the privilege of not having to sacrifice because of the decisions they make. Our nation is in a moment of urgency where white supremacy and attacks on the poor are on the rise. And we all have choices to make that will either turn the tide or not. Tonight is your choice. Tonight is your choice. Thank you. For, the just, for justice and decency to be served, <clears throat> moments like this require that people like you decide to disobey mandates that the interests you serve call necessary, but that you know are violent that you know are wrong. So the folks here tonight are offering you an opportunity for you to not have to be personally, yes, personally responsible for thousands of people to lose their homes, for this city to lose its heart and soul, and for y'all to sacrifice your own humanity to help carry that out. So vote for the lives of the people in the Bronx, and if not that, vote for your own humanity. Vote for a rent rollback. Thank you. The next speakers are Josefina Salazar, Yolanda Rosado, and Alba Quinones. Hi, Josefina. I'm going to translate for Josefina, but she's going to read her whole speech, and then I'll read the whole translated speech up after her. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Josefina Salazar y soy miembro de Movimiento por Justicia del Barrio. Nosotros venimos del, del este de Harlem. Estamos aquí porque estamos en contra del aumento de renta. Nosotros somos personas de bajos recursos, que trabajamos, pero eso no es suficiente. Tenemos muchos gastos, y para que ustedes quieran subir la renta, no, no es justo. Eh, Ustedes quieren subir la renta cada año. No, 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 nosotros no, no estamos este, conscientes de eso. Disculpen que les diga a todos los que están allí en la mesa, pero ustedes no saben qué es vivir en carencias. Ustedes no saben qué es ser gente de bajos ingresos como nosotros, el pueblo. Porque ustedes tal vez tienen sus casas grandes, sus apartamentos grandes y amueblados. Y no saben qué es, es estar pensando o, o estar preocupados por la renta cada mes. Y ustedes les vale si nosotros tenemos para la renta o estamos enfermos o no tenemos trabajo. Nosotros tenemos que pagar nuestra renta. Y, y ustedes todavía quieren subirla cada año, no estamos de acuerdo. 
ya ustedes están considerando el aumento. Queremos y exigimos una congelación de renta. Porque a nosotros los de bajos recursos, la gente de eh, pobre, nos perjudica mucho. A todos nosotros, los, todos nosotros el pueblo, eh, somos pobres. No tenemos trabajo donde nos dé suficiente dinero como para pagar cada año eh, altas rentas. El alcalde y ustedes de la mesa directiva solo piensan en el aumento, no se ponen a pensar en nosotros, que ganamos pocos, que tenemos esa posibilidad de, de tener, no tenemos eh, buenos recursos, por eso es que estamos todos aquí, pidiendo y exigiendo, como acaba de decir un compañero, nosotros es para que estuviéramos en nuestras casas, con nuestras familias, con nuestros hijos, que, que mañana para prepararlos para la escuela. Eh, por ejemplo, yo en este momento es para que estuviera preparando mis cosas, yo trabajo en la calle vendiendo, y, pero yo estoy aquí porque a mí me interesa que, que pongan un alto a la, a la renta, porque yo no tengo para pagar Excuse una me, renta. We're way past two minutes here. Could you please wind up? Could you ask her to please finish up? Yo estoy segura que ni uno de ustedes de la mesa directiva, ni uno de ustedes vive como yo vivo. Yo estoy segura que ni uno de ustedes. Tengo cuatro hijos y dos son mayores que no se han podido ir de mi lado porque no tienen para pagar un apartamento. Mi apartamento es muy chico. No tengo, no tengo la posibilidad o darme el lujo de agarrar otro más grande para cada quien tener su privacidad. ¿Por qué? Porque están bien altas las rentas. Soy una madre soltera y yo no tengo, no me alcanza para eso. Entonces, we need to let everyone get a chance to speak here. We have 20 more people who need to speak. Okay. It's only fair that people abide by the two-minute rule. Everybody on this board has agreed to the two-minute rule. Good evening, my name is Josefina Salazar and I'm a member of Movement for Justice in El Barrio. We came from, from there, from Harlem. We are here today because we are against rent increases. We are low-income people who work, but that is not enough. We have many expenses and it is unjust for you to want to rent, uh, raise the rent on us every year. Excuse me for saying this, but you do not know what it is to like, to, you do not know what it is like to live in poverty. You do not know about being low income because you might have your big houses or big and furnished apartments and you do not know what it is to think or be worried about the rent every month. You do not care if we do not have enough for the rent, if we are sick, if we are out of work. You still want to increase it every year and we are not okay with it. You already increased the rent considerably. We want and demand a rent freeze because this hurts us, low-income people, because we do not have the money to pay such high fees for rent. The mayor and you all on the Rent Guidelines Board only think about increasing rent and never consider the lives of people like us. You make, we make very little. We do not all come from money, and that is why we are here asking, demanding that you be reasonable, that you freeze our rent. I am certain that not a single one of you live like me. I'm a single mother, I have four children, and the two older ones still live with me because they don't have enough for their own place because they're studying. My apartment is very small and I cannot afford to move to a bigger place, and you guys are still increasing the rent. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Yolanda Rosado. Is Yolanda Rosado here? El Barrio will not be sold. It will be loved and it will be defended. Alba Quinones. Yolanda Rosado. Alba Quinones. Benita Ramos. April Hurley. And Shannon Jones will be the next three speakers.
is Benita Ramos here? All right, you're the next speaker, Ms. Ramos. Buenas noches a todos. Good evening. Mi nombre es Benita Ramos. Yo vivo en el 16 Helio Place. Estoy acá porque yo les quiero pedir un congelamiento de renta. Good evening, my name is Benita Ramos and I live at 16 Elliott Place and I'm here to ask you for a rent freeze. Les pido que el congelamiento de renta porque yo no puedo pagar mi renta. El año pasado, el mes de agosto, el dueño me mandó a corte y estuve casi ahí un año. Apenas hoy eh, terminé de pagar todo lo que yo le debía. Yo tengo esposo y tres hijos. Él trabaja, pero no nos alcanza. Son muchos gastos. Eh, mi hijo, el mayor, tiene asma. Excuse me just a moment. We need to stop and get a trans, uh, interpretation, please. I'm asking for a rent freeze because I can't pay the, I can't afford to pay rent if we have an increase. Uh, Last year, I, or in my previous apartment, I was taken to court by my landlord and I was in court in procedures for a year. I just finished paying what I owed him yesterday or today. I have a husband and three kids, but we don't have enough for, ever, for all of us. One of my children has asthma. Yo trabajo para ayudarle a mi esposo con los gastos pero a veces yo me voy a trabajar y como en media hora me llaman de la escuela que tengo que recoger el niño porque está enfermo, tiene asma, no puede respirar. Yo tengo que salir del trabajo y no me pagan to toda la semana, to no, no trabajo muchas horas por atender a mi hijo, que lo tengo que llevar al hospital. Con Excuse me, let's get the interpretation, please. I work to support my husband with expenses, but I don't, um, I don't earn enough. Uh, I go to work, and 30 minutes later, I'll get a call from the school to go pick up my son because he's sick. So I don't work enough hours to make ends meet. I constantly have to take care of my son because he's struggling with his illness. Por eso estoy acá pidiéndole a ustedes un congelamiento de renta. Porque el, el otro mes yo voy a pagar más. Y yo no sé qué, qué voy a hacer si apenas hoy terminé de pagarle lo que le debía a mi casero. Por favor, tengan consciente que nosotros trabajamos, pero no ganamos suficiente para pagar todos nuestros gastos. A veces mi, mis hijos dicen, mami, yo quiero un, necesito tenis. Y yo les tengo que decir, hasta que paguemos la renta, si nos alcanza, les compro, y si no, al otro mes. So I'm here to ask you for a rent freeze, because next month I'm going to pay more, I'm going to have to pay more rent, and I don't know what I'm going to do if I just finish paying my landlord what I owe them today. I ask you to please consider all of this because all of us work, but we don't earn enough. Sometimes my kids say, I need, mom, I need new shoes. And I tell him, or I tell them that we have to wait until we see if we have enough for rent. And if we, and if we don't, then they're going to have to wait until next month. Muchas Thank you. Gracias. Muchas oh. gracias por escuchar. Buenas noches. Thank you for Thank listening. You. Good night. April Harley. Um, good evening. Thank you for your time good evening. and your consideration. Um, I've like rewritten what I'm going to say like a million times, but tonight you've heard many well-spoken testimonies about um, folks urging you for a rent freeze. But you all know what we really want is a rent rollback. Um, earlier, my elders highlighted statistics 
like that there are 63,000 folks who are homeless. But tonight I wanted to speak about those who are homeless but they aren't counted, those who are doubled up, those who are homeless and they hop from one apartment to another apartment. Growing up, I experienced that. Um, my mom owned a home and it was a, a private landlord and he just kept raising the rents and then one day we got evicted and after we were evicted, we were blessed to live with a family and then we, from one family we moved to another family until my mom was able to get an apartment. The apartment was small and it was crowded, but that was all that she could afford. Um, as the elders spoke before, you already know many of the statistics mentioned, you already know many of the characteristics, what it's like to live in the Bronx. You may have experienced it yourself, you may have experienced lived with, living with roaches and mice, or maybe you haven't. Maybe it's common for you to hear that there's no heat and no hot water. Maybe you think that is a norm. Maybe you feel like we are accustomed to this and we like this. But what I choose to believe is that you're doing a temperature check. That you want to see how oppressed are the people and are we ready to cry out? Are we ready to push back and say no more? And here I am to raise the temperature to say yes, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We are sick and tired of being cold. We are sick and tired of paying more than 30% of what we earned. We are sick and tired of just coming out of, of being, of, of being threatened and harassed by our landlords. We are sick and tired and now we are coming to you. We are appealing to you and we're saying, yes, please, freeze the rent. But if you can, roll back the rent. It is too much. You understand, I'm pretty sure you've heard of gentrification and what it is. But one thing that I've learned recently is that it is a class warfare. So now maybe folks like me who earn less than $65,000 may be being pushed out. But one day it will reach your doorstep. One day the low class would have been pushed out and if you consider yourself middle class, you will begin to experience what it is to be pushed out. So Thank tonight you. I am here, I am here to ask that you consider and you freeze the rent as you did in 2015 and 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Shannon Jones, Deborah Awa, and Esti Agolia. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Shannon Jones, and I ended up here because somebody asked me if I wanted to go out for a drink after work. And I ended up in the Rent Guidelines Board meeting. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> No, oh no, y'all not going to be laughing, trust and believe, because this person is one of the smartest people I know, and he knew exactly what he was doing by asking me, an uh, anti-police brutality activist and a militant revolutionary, to meet him at the Rent Guidelines Board meeting. So you guys will not be laughing over the next minute and 30 seconds. So my name is Shannon Jones, and I'm the co-founder of Bronx Sites for NYPD Accountability, affectionately known as Why Accountability. And let me preface what I'm about to say is that as many people that stood up here and talked about the conditions that they're living with, uh, the Rent Lock Guidelines Board saw fit to enforce the rules of time. We will not be enforcing the rules of time when I'm on this mic, so y'all might as well turn the clock off. Saying that in advance. All right, so what does an anti-police brutality, militant, revolutionary activist that spent 15 years living in New York City public housing doing in a rent guidelines board meeting. I don't pay rent according to rent guidelines. What does police brutality got to do with your rent and MCIs? What does all that got to do with each other, right? The hell is she doing up here? I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing up here. I'm doing that, what I'm doing up here is I'm facing you. I'm facing my family. I'm not facing them because you're not going to appeal to any morality of your oppressors because they don't have any. That's why I'm facing this way. Why am I facing this way? For what? These people are going to listen to your busted refrigerators, your roaches, your rats, your greedy landlord, your harassing landlord, and listen to all your sob stories with all of these sad faces, all of these stoic looks, 
these looks of concern. Oh, that's so sad. But check this out. They don't give a damn. When we recognize that as the real New York City, black and brown, that they don't give a damn. How many times, because I saw El Barrio at the CB11 rezoning meeting in Manhattan, so I know the work they do. How many times are we going to read stories about our real life experiences for rent to go up, for landlords to ignore you, for them to put cameras in your building, to send goons to harass you, to withhold your rent checks. This is the same thing that they do in New York City Housing Authority, slum you out. When we understand this, then we will understand that New York City has declared a war on you. War has been declared on you. So are you engaged in the war or are you sleeping through the war? Because standing up here telling people about your roaches and rats is not part of the rules of engagement if you want to win. Because these people don't give a damn about what you're going through. Period. And they use the militarized police state to enforce their will on you. It is all connected. Because if you don't pay your rent and you end up in court and you're seeking an abatement, you got court officers. Is it NYP out, NYPD out there right now? Because they want to make sure you don't really hold this board accountable. That you don't really hold landlords accountable. They want to make sure that you don't do that. So the militarized police state is in here keeping you in check. Put the pieces of the puzzle together, family. Stop coming up to these boards and begging these people that drink out of Merlot glasses, that send their kids to private school, that drink or eat hors d'oeuvres, and will never come in contact with you except to tell you they want their Frappuccino extra light with almond milk and a, and a, a, a biscotti while you write their name on the side of a cup and you only make $13 an hour and your kids don't have the Wi-Fi service to get their homework done. Are you ready for war? Are you ready for war? Because that's what this is and nothing less. So my advice to you is Never face them, face your people. Engage your people, mount up your troops. So, if the rent goes up, what you gonna do? That's the question. It's not, please, please, please don't raise my rent. Please, please, please roll back my rent. You're begging your oppressor to show you mercy. You begging the people that call you rachas when they're in their casa. For mercy the question is what are you gonna do when that MCI is another forty three dollars a month what are you gonna do when your rent goes up another eighty dollars a month are you gonna withhold your rent are you gonna let the militarized police state drag you out of your house by force what are you prepared to do to fight for your city and fight for your homes and fight against your oppressor that has declared war on you. Any organization that teaches you any less than that, that you are not at war, are playing games with you while their CEOs sit at the same parties that they are at. Okay? You ask the CEO of your organization where they party at what their wine cooler looks like, where their kids go to school at, while they trick you not to be engaged in the war that you are in. Do we understand this family? Do we understand this family? Do not allow gentrifiers to come get on this mic and tell their sob stories about making $90,000 a year and can't pay $5,000 rent so they got to go back home to their parents. I saw somebody take this mic and say that crap and some of y'all clapped. 
You are clapping for your oppressor. Listen carefully to what's being said in this room. You are at war. I say it again. You are at war. The police have declared war on you. The 1% have declared war on you. People in their high posts have declared war on you. I sat here for three hours and watched these people not move a muscle when you tell the stories about your apartment. And why did I say they do that? Because they don't give a damn. Accept it. So you can move to the next level that you need to move to. Stop begging. Black people are not perpetual victims. We are the originators of civilization. We are not perpetual victims. You don't come here begging. You come here telling. If our rent goes up, this is what we're going to do. If you don't roll that rent back, this is what we're going to do. If you let this landlord get away with neglecting us, this is what we're going to do. You come here to deliver the or else. You don't come here to beg. Black people, we don't beg. Africans, we don't beg. If you're Afro-Puerto Rican, you don't beg. If you're African-Dominican, you don't beg. If you're African-Peruvian, you don't beg. You come here and you lay down the law and you stand behind your law. We are at war, family. You better get with the program. These people don't give a shit. Is Deborah Alwa here? Deborah Alwa? Esti Agolia? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Deborah Alwa. Oh, you're Deborah. Okay. Yeah. I live at uh, 382024 Bronze Boulevard. My landlord is, uh, I forget their name. So I've been living there for about, I say, five years. And the reason I'm here is uh, they need, there's no need for them to freeze there, give a free rent freezer. And 30% more of income rate, they should bring it out or they should starve it because I'm living in low income and it's hard for me to make the payment every month. So if I refuse to pay it monthly, they used to give a overcharge, that's the late fee. And it's, uh, it makes the bill piling up. So right now I'm evicted from, uh, from my room. So we are here that they should consider because of the low income rate that we are having in our salary so that uh, we can live peacefully in our apartment. And uh, we are, I'm here right now saying thank you to CASA. They support me for all this issue. If not with their support, I will have not know where I will be. So we need support about uh, this issue. Thank you and good night. We need a range phrasing. Thank, Thank you. Esti Agolia. Is Esti here? No? All right. The next three speakers are Domingo Payano, Inalda Aguilar, and Alton Anderson. Dominga Payana, Inalda Aguilar, Alton Anderson. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone up there. Good evening. Okay. Uh, I would like to say uh, I had worked with the uh, Housing Authority throughout my life and uh, in other jobs. I've been an exterminator, a boiler man, 
things of that type. And uh, I've paid my rent. I've seen things get bad for different people. But uh, I, I, I still would like to say, though, that... Uh, Okay, all right. All right, I got it, yeah. I mean, I've seen times uh, uh, when things don't go right. I was working for the housing authority and a little something go wrong, they put you on a hearing and you may lose some of your pay. Things of that type, which I don't think is right. Uh, uh, I've seen times that uh, when you go to court or anything for a hearing and the people get out there and don't tell the truth about what that might have happened and you end up having to pay and suffer for it. I've seen times when uh, you, you're supposed to have things fixed. Like in my case, I, I haven't had the electricity uh, fixed yet. I mean, it don't make sense. You pay your money on time, and uh, but you don't get the results all the time, and it, does, it doesn't make sense to, for for you have to argue about paying your rent and this and that all the time for minor little things. They want to give you trouble. They they have people hanging in the hallways, and what they do, they want to give you a fine or something, or try to find a way to write you up. I've seen, I was out there the other day outside the building and had the uh, representatives trying to find a way to uh, 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 get, go against my daughter. She's outside, not even in the building. She's standing outside, she was smoking a cigarette. So what? What's that got to do with your building? You got free, people got freedom to do as they please, even if it's wrong. They got freedom to do as they please. Only thing you can do is if they're wrong, you can try to correct it. But if they're right, you're also supposed to correct it. Okay, I just want to say that uh, all, all of this here, putting people out and so on, trying to accuse people for so many things, and, and uh, ain't none of us perfect. It's all, it's all made up stuff putting people out because they didn't pay their rent. What you got to put them out for? Talk with them, try to straighten it out. You can't just, just jump quick on every little thing that come up. What you going to do if you have a, have a heart attack? I can see you having a heart attack and don't do nothing about it. You got to learn to care for each other. We don't own nothing. We don't own nothing. If I had a million dollars, it don't mean a damn thing to me. I can't take no damn money with me if I die and stuff. What do I care about the money? All I care about the money is to give it away to help different people. I don't care if I ain't got no Cadillac car, bunker damn car. It don't mean nothing to me. It's not important. Mr. We Anderson, your okay. time is up. Okay, but we all, have to, we all got to learn to help each other and stop trying to down each other. And that's what we're doing too much of. Uh, thank you for your testimony. The next uh, three speakers are Emma Olada, Angelina Rivera, and Cassandra Adams. Emma Olata. Good evening. This has been a long day for me. Um, I said to the young lady, I was invited by um, North Clergy. And um, I said to the young lady, I'm going to take a different flavor. Number one, I'm a baby boomer. So I've been through Jim Crow. I've been through the Black Panther. I've been through all of that stuff. So I'm not going to come out radical. But I will say this much. Like yourself, I am an elected official for the Board of Education for District 10. I will... Um, say I support a lot of the stuff I heard in terms of the 204 rezoning and the, and the Jerome Avenue rezoning and all that other stuff. 
my landlord won the Oscar, the Emmy, and the Tony for the worst landlord in the Bronx by the name of Park Ash. So I know how to kill his cat when he comes after my dog. But I want to say as an elected official, I know what you're going through. I know what you have to face. But right is right. I work with the Board of Education. I see the effect of what happened with our children when they are living in transitional housing because they were put out or because they can't eat or because their parents can't pay the rent. We must have transparency. We must look into ourselves and make the right decision. In my block alone, within a six block radius, we have four brand new affordable housing. It's not affordable because we can't afford it. What we need to do is make these landlords accountable. We heard the statistics, now do your homework. If they want to increase, make sure they do what they have to do. A lot of these landlords are not making the repairs. I had to walk up and down five flight of stairs just to come here tonight to turn around and walk back up five more. I text my landlord, three days that elevator's been out. Look inside and do the right things. A lot of these landlords are crooks. Thank you. Angelina Rivera. Hi, my name is Angelina Rivera. I, I just want to say, you know, it, it, it's really hard for me. I'm a senior citizen. My husband's a senior citizen. We're not entitled to anything that the government gives out. According to them, we claim too much, we make too much money. Yeah, if you do everything by gross, of course. My landlord, he's so-so. He could use, do repairs in our buildings. He charges me for an air conditioner. He wants to charge a lady for uh, a dryer. He, they just want to get money doing anything. They don't care. All they are interested is money. I need a rent freeze. I'm getting older. My money's not going up. My money's coming down. So please, think. Think of us that we do not have the money to always be paying all these increases that these landlords want. I thank you and I hope that you hear me. Thank you. Cassandra Adams. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for hearing what I have to say. Okay. Now, first of all, 450 Grand Concourse used to be my address before they made this the Ostos Community <sighs> College, which I am for education, but I would allow myself, because I'm a Christian, so I'm not coming at you because God created us all. I see all of your faces and everybody in here. But I would like to appeal to you to look into your heart of hearts and realize that God is above Trump. He's above all. But at the same time, the second commandment, after loving God, we have to love thy neighbor. We are each other's keeper. We each other's neighbor, whether you my cab driver to drive me to my doctor's appointment, or whether you a teacher in the school teaching my autistic granddaughter. Now, where I'm from, like I said, in 1972, I lived at 450 Grand Concourse. We don't need no increases. We don't need no displacement. Because when you become homeless, the hotels or the housing who have to fund that, that's over $3,000 per person. This new building situation that they're building up, a building on every corner, liquor store, church, whatever have you, whatever the people do to maintain their self. You can have a million dollars and have no peace. We already seen it with the two people who committed suicide. 
but I want to appeal to you that it'll be suicide if you displace the people who are working, hard working people of the city of New York who are out there in the struggle just fighting for basic human needs, which is respect. They want to keep their integrity, have character so they can teach their children that you don't have to be grown and living in my house. I took my children and raised them upstate. I'm from the Bronx. We came back down because my youngest got accepted to Pace University. She's a graduate. My other daughter, thank God, they, nobody had to reside under my roof. But I sat here and I heard testimony after testimony. Everything everyone said resonates with me. But my heart goes out to the people, and I hope de Blasio hear this. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, brother. But at the same time, NYCHA, that's just one thing, but you have greed. It's only two factors. It's not even race. It's greed, and more people are being displaced because they don't have enough green, which is money. And the sad part about it, when we go home and we think about, and it's some, something that's going to touch your heart, I already know it. But what I'm trying to state, and I'm making this point, but I want to make it real clear to you. Because I was in 1199 Union for many, many years. But in working with the disabled, United Cerebral Palsy of the state of New York. But at the same time of having this, I became disabled, having seizures after seizures after seizures. But I was at a point where I was making good money. My husband made good money. We're separated now, but that's all right. But at the same time, people are out here struggling just to eat, just to pay car fare, just to keep a roof over their head, and to live like they're living now while other buildings are going up. And it's junk. It's made of Legos. You build it up, it's, 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 everything is breaking down. Excuse me, could you no, I'm get to the MCI. Money? Excuse me, ma'am. I don't see you every day. Are you the one who was a former judge? Yes, I am. Okay, but listen here. Judge not unless you want to be judged. Okay, I'm not trying to disrespect you. We are here. We are faces with a voice. And we're going to have a voice tonight. What the sister said with her radical, yeah, that holds a place, but that's not my character. Okay? My character right here is I don't disrespect you. Don't do it to me. Because when, at the end of the day, when you go home, and I'm not judging you if you have money or if you don't, but people here in this community, because of the state that America is in, you have a job. You retired, right? I oh, am. I, I know you. I know all about you. I did my homework. But at the same time, <laughs> we are all on the clock. But some of us is not getting paid to be on the clock. We come out here risking whether we're going to get home safely. You know, in time, you ride on the bus. I don't know. I, I, I assume you don't. I'm safe to assume you don't ride the number four. That, I call it the IRT, the Iron Horse. That's the time I'm from. But at the same time, we don't need no rent increases because people's money is not going up, it's going down. And all I'm just asking you, be that miracle in the middle. You on the tenant side or you on the landlord side or the mayor side. But Make yourself be a miracle in the middle so everybody can have a place to live. And thank you for hearing what I had to say. And you all have a blessed evening. Thank you. Good night. The next three speakers are Arguro Jimenez, Josefina Bourbon, and Argelio Ortiz. Arguro Jimenez. Josefina Bourbon,
Argelio Ortiz. Hi, good evening. My name is Argelio Ortiz, and I represent the organization of Nos Quedamos We Stay. New York City has turned into the tale of two cities. It is the town of the half and the half-nots. There are many living in rent-stabilized apartments that still cannot afford the rent. If there is not a rent freeze, the homeless population will continue to grow. Now, many do not qualify for housing termed as affordable because the incomes are taken from the all regions within New York State. Therefore, the local communities of people living in New York City do not get represented. And many of those local communities don't make those high incomes. So what Mayor de Blasio calls affordable is not affordable to many populations. Please take that under consideration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, the next and last two speakers are Juana Huayata and Fitzroy Christian. Juana Huayata. All right. Fitzroy Christian. Good evening. Good evening. I'm kind of glad I'm the last speaker <laughs> because then this way you could turn your time off and give me time to say what I have to say. Because I'm not speaking only for me, but for quite a few seniors who are also in my position. Until very recently, I worked in the housing court, in the Bronx housing court, and I saw every day where landlords were bringing their tenants to court on all kinds of frivolous charges, simply because they wanted to find a way to harass them out of their homes so that they could get their vacancy exceptions and do um, superficial repairs to get IAIs and MCIs so that they could take those apartments off of the rent-stabilized role. We see it every day. I saw it every day. I'm no longer working. I thought I was going to be going into retirement, but I looked at my funds and I realized I got to go to look for another job. And I'll show you why. I brought my sons up. They are all college gradu graduates, but they're not doing too well. The rent is killing them, so I had to help them. So I, have, I did not have the kind of savings that I would like to have. Right now, I'm, take, I'm getting my social security, but because of deductions and other stuff, I'm not getting what I thought I was going to get, and I'm paying 100% of my income in rent. In July, if you could read this, I will pay all of my social security, plus going into my savings to make up the balance of my rent. The same for August. So the same for September. And October. November, my savings are finished. I'll be owing my landlord money. In December, my balance is increased. And I'm sure by January, I'm going to be in court heading for a shelter. Yes, I got squeezed, so my rent is frozen. But I still cannot afford the rent with the money I'm getting now. My oldest son, I'm thinking of having him come back home. So he has to suspend his future, his own family, moving ahead on his own, because he got to come back home to have the old man live in his apartment. He is having a hard time. He cannot make it on his own. So our combined salary is what's going to make us survive together because he cannot make it on his own with a college degree. And I cannot make it on my own with two college degrees and over 50 years of working. You 
are the final barrier between me and the shelter. There are a whole lot of seniors who are in my position. I have lost a whole lot of friends in the Bronx because they were forced out of the apartments with the high rents and had to go to live with their children elsewhere. There are a lot of families who bid goodbye to their children, but two, three, four years later, they're back home where they came from because they cannot afford it on their own or their parents are on the brink of being evicted and being homeless and they had to come back to help their families. This is not the way human beings are supposed to live. All of us don't make six and seven figures a year, so we don't have that thick cushion on which we can survive in retirement, in our golden years. I'm in my 70s. I should not have to be looking for work. Yes, I was careless. I did not know six, seven months ago how things were going because I had income. I was able to help my kids and I felt as a dad I was doing what I had to do. Things were going bad for them so I could help them. I had a lot of friends who were doing the same thing. Now I'm no longer working, my income has changed, and I'm looking at homelessness. You can help to prevent that. For me, and for tens of thousands of other seniors, and tens of thousands of other people who are young, who are working, but they cannot afford to stay in, in the Bronx because they're being pushed out. On top of that, there are three rezonings that are scheduled for the Bronx. We're talking about three phases of gentrification, three phases of displacement where tens of thousands of people have to find places to live which are worse than where they are now because we have been pushed out to make room for wealthier people, to take the place where we have been living for 40, 50, 60 years or more. We stayed here when the Bronx was burning. When they closed the firehouses, we stayed here. When they closed our schools and did not fix our parks, we stayed here. When the drug infestation ravaged the Bronx, we stayed here. And now through rent increases, MCIs, IAIs, um, rezonings, all kind of mechanics used by the city and by landlords and the whole predatory equity problems that they have are pushing us out of our homes. You cannot do all, but one thing you can do is to give us a rent freeze, give us a little relief, give us a time, a year or two, to be able to catch a breath and make some plans so that we can try to stay home. Raising the rent this year means an increase in the 60,000 people who are sleeping in shelters. It's an increase in the 40,000 people who are doubling and tripling up in homes meant for one family. You can stop it if you have the will. You can stop it if your heart is made of anything other than steel. You can stop it if you're a human being. Good night. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. It's very important to us to hear from all of you, and we appreciate your patience in taking the time to come this evening. Uh, at this point, we've concluded the testimony. I'll ask, is there a motion to adjourn? A second. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you.